Okay, so I'm going to give this thing a shot. It's Election USA. From what I remember, it's uh, Martin Wallace's first game. And in a sense, it's more of a... Mm, say a satirical look at uh, United States politics, especially Republicans, from an Englishman's perspective, I guess. And I think it's got to be taken, taken in, that, in that light. Uh, there might be factors in it that are somewhat disturbing. The fact that it particularly targets the Republicans rather than just uh, targeting all American politics, which really is pretty laughable in and of itself, it is disturbing. But, um, okay, that could have been a serious game. However, in this one, it is more mocking uh, the Republican Party and some of the apparent hypocrisies that show up in it. Now, um, at least that's my take from looking at the rules, which, you know, include such things as select the most right-wing player to go first, and a few of the cards. Uh, like most Wallace games, the rules here are really pretty bad. Uh, hard to read through. Not necessarily do they not explain everything. I'm not sure of that. That's part of the problem. When you read through rules and you uh, a couple of times, and there are, luckily aren't a lot here, but you're not sure if you have the whole game because there, in this case, doesn't seem to be much game here. But I think that's actually the case. Okay. Let's take a look at what the rules are like. All two pages. And uh, maybe try to get a feel for what the game's about. So, from what I can tell, you have a pool of these pawns, which are going to be your votes, essentially. And you've got more sitting here. And you've got money. These are one dollars, and the smaller ones are five, or threes, I'm sorry. Uh, which can pay for some things. There's a small deck of cards, which is undifferentiated on the back from the larger deck of cards. Uh, called skeleton cards. These are bad things, I guess, that can happen. You're supposed to set the game up with cards going all the way around the board. I see no point to that, and that's going to disturb my uh, karma. So, we'll set up ten cards here. If I can fit ten. I've got five so far. We're going to have to slide over. Six, seven, eight, nine, and you can see countries with unpronounceable names to be ejected from the UN. Ah, uh, okay. Three, six, nine, ten. Uh, in a sense, that could just be seen as a nativist type view, but a lot of the Republican base actually is, so it does sort of fit that it's targeting them, but we'll see how annoying that aspect really comes into play here. I'm no Republican, but mm, I don't know. You know, you don't mind, I don't mind a game like uh, Lords of the Hood making fun of, uh, you know, gang interactions in Buffalo, New York. So I probably shouldn't be too disturbed by making fun of our political process in this way, even if it's partisan. Because, you know, in a sense, well... They're just businessmen, right? <laughs> okay. So how do you play? Well, you play with starting with the first player. And as always, I'll start in the uh, upper left and work counterclockwise instead of clockwise just to be who I am. Um, and what happens is each player has, two ch has a couple of choices. One is they can pick one of these cards and activate it. And different cards have different effects when activated. Great. Now, it can also attempt to increase his sincerity. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what sincerity does, but there we have it. Okay. Um, these little blue numbers affect that, I think. They affect something else in the game. They're not part of the card itself. Okay. Um, 
And then once a player finishes his card, he draws a new one and puts it in, in play. Available for other people. Now here it gets weird. If it is a black... A, if a player selects a card, he draws a replacement card from the deck. If it's a blackmailer journalist, then who ends up with it must be decided immediately. See below for what happens in such a case. Well, luckily we don't have one out there. I'm not sure what happens if you set up in that case, does it say? If blackmailer journalists are drawn, they're immediately replaced. Cool. Okay. All right, so I think they have to be resolved when they come up, not when the player picks them. I was had some questions about that when I first read it, and I just wanted to make sure. So the different cards that you can choose, the fundraising card. What happens here is you hold an auction, and starting with the first player, he makes a bid, and then you go around the board, and people can pass or bid a higher amount. Um, once the bid comes back to the first player, they can make another bid, and that is the final bid if it happens. The highest bid wins the card. You pay for the bid in sincerity points. Okay, so we got a use for them finally. Um, and you take the card and a number of pawns from the box over there equal to the number on the card from the pool. Yeah, his construction of sentences is really horrible. Okay, so the number on the card, hmm. And a number of his own pawns equal to the number on the card. I, this may be the number on the card, but there's two others. So I don't know, but... Uh, wait, I read the wrong one. Uh, the active player chooses to play it, then he takes... Aha, well, that's why I'm confused. Okay, the active player chooses to take a fundraising card... Then he takes the higher amount on the card in dollars. The other players take the lower amount. There's no bidding on that. You just draw it, and everybody gets some money. Fine. The policy card goes up for bid, and we've got those up here. And they give you a number of tokens, I guess, pictured. The bid is paid for with sincerity points, which means the winning bidder... Um, the winner takes the card and a number of his own pawns equal to the number on the card from the pool. Well... Not equal to the number on the card, but equal to the number of pawns on the card, I'm guessing. Okay, but that, that makes sense. Uh, and you retain these just uh, for amusement value and to be quoting that again and again throughout the game, I guess, or whatever. Uh, advertising cards. We have these here. This is done with a sealed auction. You put the money in your fist. Um, and you keep that amount secret. Now everybody's going to have to pay the amount they show. The highest bidder gets pawns, not on the board, but from his pool that he gets to place, equal to the higher number on the advertising card. Uh, the highest bid that you can make is seven million dollars. Anything higher, you're just wasting money, I guess. Uh, the lowest bid that allows you to place the higher value of cubes is $3, but if you win with less than $3, you get to place the lower number of cubes. And first and second place get to place cubes, or not cubes, but uh, little pawns, and you can only place, you, you have to have bid at least a dollar to place even the second place one. Uh, that's the way I get it, and everybody pays their money. These pawns come from here, not from the box. And this is kind of a weird thing. You have this two pools, one pool of, us of usable pawns that you're going to place on the vo board, and they're going to be your points, which uh, votes, which give you victory points, and one pool of another nine pawns that you can bring into play maybe through fundraising, I guess. Was that fundraising? No, policies. Policies is what give you those pawns. Not well explained in the rules, however. It would be really useful if they stated these things out loud. Uh, blackmail card. If you draw this, each player, going in player order, uh, has to decide to pay an amount on the card or take a skeleton card. Well, we don't have an amount on there, but basically each person can throw some cash in, but if you choose not to, you get a skeleton card. 
And the first person who takes the skeleton card saves everyone going after him. Uh, so there's kind of a double cost there. Skeleton cards could gain something, supposedly. If a player loses pawns, he must place them from those he holds, but if he has none, he can place one from the general pool. If he doesn't have enough money, he must take a skeleton card. What? <laughs> Oh, if you can't pay for the blackmail card. Journalist card. These are similar to blackmail, but you choose between paying the amount on the card and sincerity points or taking a skeleton card. Okay. Gaining sincerity. Instead of playing a card, uh, you can try to increase your sincerity, and you take the top card from the deck, and this is where, and the only place you use these numbers, you get that much sincerity. And that could be a zero, as we see here. Uh, if it's a blackmail or journalist, as well as gaining any sincerity, that card's resolved immediately. Uh, the game ends when somebody's placed all their pawns on the map, or when someone had to take four skeleton cards, or if the action deck's been run through. And in any case, you calculate your victory points by looking at each area in the map, and anybody who's tied on the map, if they have the same number of pawns as any other players, all their pawns are removed. Uh, and then you get to score the victory points. So, as an example, if we had this situation, these guys would go away. All right. If we had this situation, these guys would go away before we do any scoring. Now, for scoring, the person with the most pawns gets the highest value, second most, third most. Um, if you have four skeleton cards in your hand, and that's how the game ended, you lose eight victory points. The person with the most total victory points wins the game. Uh, if there's a tie, out of the tied players, the person with the most position cards takes precedence. If it's still a tie, well, I don't know. You don't get to, you don't get to nominate anyone. <laughs> All right. So... Definitely a very lighthearted uh, look. Uh, maybe a little bit too bitter for some people in flavor. But also, it doesn't look like there's a lot of a game here. Uh, this is not your normal Martin Wallace type game. I'm going to load this one up, let you guys see the intro, and then, well, I'll get started with playing.